Well, hi, good morning, and thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Today is December 14th, and I'm starting on a radio here. My first, I think this is my first Polish built radio. So, this radio was built in Poland. The name on the front there is the Koplana, C O P L A N A. Pretty sure this was built for North American, for the North American market, uh, United States really. Uh, uh, let's just take a look. It's in great shape. You know, especially when you look at on these radios, the cloth is in, in great shape. That's fantastic. Cabinet, the sides are beautiful. Top has just a little bit of just a little bit of scratching. You know, not much at all. Fantastic. Sides so beautiful. Let's look at the back. <clears throat> so right away, hey, it's all in English. There's no Polish on here. So uh, for sure this was made for the export market. Caution, remove cover completely for servicing. And, and that's to make sure you pull this right out. And there's no power supply to it. <clears throat> so we got a tape recorder, phono pickup, external speaker. That's the uh, serial number, I think, right in here, through this window. Antenna ground, antenna FM. See, there are some wires here. This one was underneath, uh, a little bit of wire exposed. I'm not sure what was going on there. There's a bit of a bit of wire here and a bit of wire here, so there's probably a large loop in here or something like that. You know, another sign that this is made for North American uh, markets is the extent of the FM uh, scale that goes from 88 up to 108. That's in North America. That could have been exact versions, or not exact, but nearly identical versions made for uh, European for the European market, I would imagine. I would imagine. Oh, this radio also has, I didn't mention it. A magic eye. I think I hear, I think I hear my cat. So these guys, you know, loosen them up. Oh boy, look at that thing. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, never seen one of these before. Okay, we got a little bit of information on the back. ECC85, ECH81, EBF89, EBF ECL82, EM81. The usual characters there. Okay, nothing else on the back. wires, wasn't it? Let's just bring the back back. Is that, is that why this is floppy? So one end of the wire is here, it's knotted. And, uh, this, this is not the usual way this wire would be trained through here. So if something happened to the antenna, why, wait a minute, don't, don't walk away, why? So this, this is probably supposed to go to the chassis or something like that. Okay, I see another mystery here. Why is this wire swinging like this? It's going nowhere. It's another wire to nowhere. Uh, not stripped back. Somebody put it under there with the insulation still intact. So 
So this wire runs to an antenna, which is running up the inside. I can feel it with my finger. It's running all the way. Oop, runs to here and ends. Can be the same kind of wire, maybe not. Well, okay. <laughs> we're, off, we're off to a good start already. So at a glance, there's nothing leaping out at me. Let's uh, look at really, it. Looks to be in really good shape. It's a little more spread out than some of these uh, radios, and the components are all spread nicely on the board down here. Looks to be in really good, really good shape. Let's, let's take a close look. I see a bunch of capacitors there that actually look really bad. So we'll okay, let's take a close look at this radio. We'll just start in the top left hand corner, kind of where, where I was a moment ago. This of course is the uh, antenna. Arrangement. What, what, what is that thing I'm looking at? So that's the end of the uh, carbon rod. It's an antenna way out on that end. And there's another one way out on this end. I don't know what what exactly that thing is there. <laughs> yeah, the component in it has the English writing on it. Well, maybe that's not English. Uh, L L W something. I don't really recognize that. Look at a radio built in a country you've never seen before. You're liable to see stuff. You know, things are done just a little differently. So well, this is the uh, FM tuner box here we're looking at. Wave tuning capacitor here. Clean, pretty darn clean. Of course, this radio is in great shape. It's been taken care of its whole life. So, there we have the, uh, the spring loaded double cog system to stop uh, backlash in tuning. Hey, why don't I tune this radio and see if it'll tune? Yeah, I'm just just turning the tuning knob here. Is it, is it once one tuner for the one knob for the whole deal? So there must be some uh, strings and stuff like that uh, connecting all this together. I don't really see any strings. This must be on the other side of the uh, board here. Some pretty sad looking parts. I imagine that's got to be a capacitor. I'm looking for things that are have obviously overheated or uh, you know something has happened to them. I'm also just getting familiar with you know what what this guy looks like. Lots of 
paint on that, uh, red, red paint on that. So nobody will touch it. Look down inside these, that hard to say, but I bet you there's wax dripped in them. It looks, yeah, these are all waxed up. Waxed up or painted up. You can probably just ignore the paint and uh, power past it, but the wax is a problem. I'll get over in this area here, just to give you an idea of where we are in the radio. Capacitor down. Well, hopefully it's easy to get the other side of the board. That's a capacitor too. That. Has popped off the, the cover of the very. Probably doesn't mean anything. Probably shrank and just kind of either shrank and squeezed itself off or it uh, lost its. Uh, Six or seven of those kind of capacitors in here. So here's one here. This one looks pretty good though. Yeah, this one looks very good. Doesn't guarantee anything. A couple of diodes there. Electrolytic capacitor there. Gee, I wonder if that's the uh, small electrolytic capacitor that's involved in the uh, detection of FM. I wonder if that's the guy. Hey, something happened to him? Yeah, it almost looks like the shell is popped open on the left side there at the bottom. Something's happened on the uh, chassis there too. Okay, uh, take a look at the speaker here. This looks to be fine. Says Tommen, Tommen. See, I wonder if they're sitting in Poland putting together radios from parts that have come from other countries, GDS something or other. So, you know, how Polish is it? Uh, Polish built? Uh, Polish components? Maybe not. Well, Poland's a pretty industrial country, isn't it? Hey, look back here. There's a little picture on it. What's that? Get a better look at it once the once the uh, NR8 P. I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, over here, the far side. We're looking now at the fuse. Which appears good. A big transformer here. Filter capacitor. Probably somewhere over here, some diodes. I don't see any. Not made out of diodes, but uh, a little box with uh, I don't see a full wave, uh, full wave rectifier in it. There's some more adjusting things. Look at that. Well, maybe we don't have to adjust anything. You know, I'm not sure the owner has even turned these radio, this radio on. He's quite worried about that. Okay, tubes. What do we got for tubes in here? We've got this one. We got this one. It has a metal uh, sleeve on it. Wow, it's really tight to the tube too. 
split sleeve. Split sleeve on the tube. That's why it's tight. Only, only the lower part. And then we found this has got to be the output tube. It's really, really dusty. Now this tube's really dusty, and nothing else in here is dusty. Like, look at this tube. And this one. And, like, look at this surface here. There's no dust on it. There's no dust on it. So oh, this tube gets so dusty and dirty. Has it come from another radio? ECL82. ECL82. Uh, is that one of them? ECL. Oh, yeah, ECL82. Yep. Just didn't remember that. Okay, now we've got a kind of a thick plate down here, and it's got stuff going on. What's going on here? It almost looks like there's a shaft underneath there. What is that? Something to do with the switches? Looks like it, doesn't it? Okay, let's push a button. I'm going to try to push the button we're looking at. something moving there, isn't it? They hold this really still. Huh. There's a little bit of movement in this piece. Well, that's curious. What's all that about? Hmm. Must be, it must be maybe the uh, push button, the mechanical part is contained in here. Why it's so big though? I mean, the buttons are way out here at the front. They might have to make something go all the way to the back. They've soldered that wire onto the top of the capacitor and then this junk is showing up. Maybe that's resin or something like rosin. Maybe something similar here. Something appears to be corroding the uh, metal though. Is there anything up higher that can drip on it? What, what can drip on it? There's nothing up there. That's the roof. There's nothing above it that can drip on it. Here's another example of some solder, and then you can see rust below it, where uh, compo uh, some chemical in, in the uh, rosin, probably. Uh, you know, it could be acid core. Rosin, that there you see. That's a coil up there, that white wire. It's kind of whipped in there. There's a link. Let's look at the linkage. What is all that? Well, it's hooked up to this push button. It's the same one I was pushing. Right? No. This one. There's, there's contacts. There's contacts under here. And it's got a little bit of a pressure finger on it. Well, I don't know. That's kind of a weird... That's a strange thing. That's definitely a strange thing. I'm anticipating trouble with these things I'm looking at. Yeah, 
that. These are definitely waxed. Waxed and painted. There's a number down there. 26. 25. P2. P2. I remember P2. P2's a little dog. Everybody in Canada who took French one and is my age knows what I'm talking about. Well, I don't see anything out of sorts here, like no disastrous things, no, nothing exploded open or burned in two or even blackened. So why don't we start them up? I'm just curious about this tube. Let's, uh, let's pop this tube out of here. And this is exactly the same socket as in the last radio that I worked on where I got convinced the sockets were bad hmm, when they weren't. Tung, Tung's RAM. Tung's RAM ECL82. Just a ton, ton of dirt. Well, the dirt's in the right spot. I don't know. I mean, the dirt's on the surf on the top surface. I thought I'd pull it out and find out it's dirtier on the bottom, and I know it's come from another radio. And why would that matter? It doesn't really. This is, the, this is the output tube. I'm pretty sure. It's. Uh, it looks like it's high mileage. Because the tubes are on their sides here, they're not sitting uh, this way, they're sitting this way. Over time, every time the radio is banged and that, the thing will work its way out of the socket and eventually come up. So these ones have two grabbers on them. Uh, Spring-loaded tube clips keep the uh, tube from coming out. Solid too. Okay. Well, I need somehow to plug this radio in. Let's see what this will do. Yep. Now, if this is the uh, you know, it's my first video on this radio. Sometimes you uh, viewers like you might be brand new to my videos. So uh, you're not used to my style here. My style is turn the cameras on and go to work. Whatever happens, happens pretty much. Uh, I, I don't go back and edit things. Uh, I, uh, I make mistakes while I'm working here. I misspeak an awful lot as I've come to realize. <laughs> Here's a here's a life lesson I've learned by doing this work. I'm talking with my wife. And my wife says, uh, uh, "You said it was going to be the brown one," and I'd say, "No, I didn't say it was the brown one. I, I said it was the red one." No, no, no. You said it's the brown one. At that point, I now say, "I'm sorry that I said it was the brown one. I meant to say it was the red one." Previously, I would have said. What are you talking about? I wouldn't have said brown. I would have said red for sure. Why would I ever say brown? I would never say brown. Well, <laughs> guess what? There's numerous times where I, and I now see that all kinds of people doing stuff unedited live, like newscasters and that, will often be thinking of one word when another word comes out their mouth and they're unaware. And that happens here a lot. So this is a technical matter and I'm trying to be as precise as I can in my speech. Uh, so you know, just you know, you gotta be careful when you watch my videos. I don't, I don't edit those mistakes out. I just assume you're quick enough to realize that I must have meant blue when I said red or something like that. Okay, that's my big apology to you. <laughs> I haven't even made a mistake yet. So I'm gonna turn this radio on. Let's, let's make sure. 
which are switched off right now. I try to identify some of these. This must be a tone switch of some sort. Why is it not sticking? So there's funny symbols for. So this one's not sticking. They seem to work beautifully. Volume is stiff. This is the volume, is it not? Feels like the knob is sliding on the shaft here. Doesn't feel quite right. There's a screw to hold it. The screw's probably loose and the knob is spinning on the shaft a little bit. So turn it down. So it's just volume. That's all there is. Volume and uh, tuning. And uh, some tone controls here. Switches off. First thing we do is we apply power and see if anything happens with the switch off because often the switches in these radios are broken and European radios I often find the switch is broken I'm coming over here so you can see those two uh, you're coming over here so you can see those two light bulbs there this one is screwed in this one is not doing anything right now when I fire up this radio I will force the power that's coming to the radio to go through that light bulb on the way the result of that is a slight reduction in the amount of power reaching the radio. Some of it's going to be used up in the light bulb. But the main thing is if there's something really seriously wrong with the radio, like a short circuit or something like that, what will happen is the light bulb will come on full blast. The amount of power flowing through the radio will be limited to the amount the light bulb can pass. Then I'll protect whatever's going on here. Plus this light bulb is going to make me hop. I'm going to turn the power off right away because I can tell what's going on. So. It's called a dim bulb system. Uh, I have a little switch panel here. As you can see, this is the main power, power on, power off. And this one directs the power to the uh, project, either through the light bulb or not. If I put this down, power goes through the light bulb. I flip it up, power goes straight, straight to here. But it doesn't go straight to here. Okay, it's coming through this transformer that you see back here. This is an isolation transformer. I think my phone is ringing here. Yeah, just the usual daily scam phone call. You can recognize it because the number that shows up on my phone is very similar to my own number. Every day, every day. Um, oh, something's happened here. I've discombobulated my camera. So you're looking at a still image. Let me just pop it back in. What a, what, a, what a crazy time we're having here. Oh, okay, where am I? Scammer phone call. Didn't even answer it. Um, that's right, so I was just explaining the panel here. So with the radio switched off, if I throw this switch downwards, power is now making it here. Uh, you can see this little box here is kind of cool. It gives you the voltage, 123.7 volts. And I can tell you lots of other stuff, uh, power consumption, whatever you plug in here. It's kind of a neat little box. So this is telling me exactly how much voltage is reaching the prongs on this cord. 123 volts. That's because there's no current flowing and, that, and there's no voltage drop on the light because of the switch is off on the radio. I have another meter here which might catch your, a couple more meters which might catch your attention now and then. This one is perpetually showing the line voltage uh, in my house. It's actually plugged right here. So it's showing the line voltage coming out of the uh, transformer. And this meter here shows the voltage arriving. This doesn't show shows the same voltage as this. This meter is actually plugged right back here. Show the outlet voltage. So that's all kinds of stuff there to keep track of what voltage is on the radio. And prevent and enable me to turn these on under these conditions. So I currently have the switch down. We're going to turn off the power. I'm going to push down the AM switch. Turn on the power. When I do, I need to watch this light very carefully. It's not so much what's happening here. It's what's happening with that light. That's fine. That's perfect. So what's happened there is when I first turned it on, current rushed into the heaters of the few tubes that are in here. Uh, the heaters are cold and the resistance is low. But very quickly the heaters heat up, the resistance goes up. 
the amount of current being drawn goes down. Now, okay, so she's a Hummer. Volume's right down. Okay, so we don't need any more of a test than that. Uh, so we learned a lot of things just now. Generally speaking, this radio is working. How do I know? Sound came out of the speaker. So generally speaking, <laughs> it's working. Uh, number two, the sound. The sound is a bad power supply. Familiar with that sound? Anybody doing this work has heard that a lot. The, the hum is really coming probably because of this guy here. He's, he's worn out. That's a 50-50 uh, capacitor. Easy to replace with little tiny capacitors today. Not this great big thing. Replace that. The hum will probably disappear. There may be another large electrolytic capacitor in here that needs to be dealt with. I don't I don't see one offhand. Oh, there's one over here. Way over there. What's it doing way over there? Um, and, and then there's all these other small capacitors that, that need to be dealt with. But no use trying to play the radio at this point because until the power supply has gone down. So I think maybe what I'd like to do next too is get the uh, schematic, try to get the schematic for this radio, which might be literally impossible. This is called a Go Plana. Is there a number with it? I don't think there was a number. So Go Plana is it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see if I can find the, the Go Plana schematic. Okay, let's check out the schematic here. I think where, where I want to start is uh, down here in the power supply. So sure enough, there's the uh, full wave uh, rectifier bridge here, which I didn't spot in the radio, but it's in there somewhere. This is that uh, silver, big silver capacitor I said had to be uh, dealt with, 250s. That's easy. In between is a 1K 8 watt resistor, which I didn't spot. And it's worth looking at that. Uh, it's an 8 watt resistor. That tells you it's a hard working resistor. It's going to get quite warm, so it's potentially a trouble spot in a radio like this. Um, so now, is there another big filter capacitor in here? Now, see how they drew these ones. Would they draw another electrolytic? I think this represents the cam. I think that's what they're trying to draw here. Here's one. So here's another one. Okay, so this is the bypass of the 390 ohm cathode resistor for the output tube. And it's a 50, 30 volt. No, 50, 50 slash 30. I'm not quite sure what they mean by this. Could be. 50 volts DC, 30 volts AC. That's what it's capable of. Okay, back to the original plan. Change these two and try the radio. Try to spot this resistor in the meantime. Okay, um, so in these one wire heads disappears under here. I don't know where it's, I don't even know what's under here. And the other one ends up into this area here. I think we got to take the radio out for sure. I mean, it's got to come out at some point. It should come out now. Bring the chassis out, and what happens to the speaker? So it has a fairly long wire. The speaker stays back. And what happens to the uh, that? Did not have a long wire. I think the tube has to come out. So how's the tube come out of there? Slides up. Oh my gosh. Can't slide up, there's no space. Slide down. Lots of room. So there's a screw here. Can't really get at it, I don't think. That would remove. That would take this whole thing off. 
another screw into the cabinet here. It's probably the best one is to do the cabinet screw, bring the whole bracket and the whole schmazzle out. Let's do that. Bracket and all. Sisters right now here. Hmm. Okay, and I think we're good to go because the uh, the whole the whole front panel goes back. Looks like it's actually back a bit right now. Okay, so this is a moment where quite a number of things can go wrong, pulling the chassis out. So let's see if I can avoid anything going wrong. Um, it's kind of wedged in there. That's a start something going on. Let's push from the front just a little bit. Okay, grabbing the heavy stuff. Listening to look at this. It's just no clearance in this thing at all. That's the one I undid from here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is a game of millimeters here. just interfered with here. We're just talking about a millimeter. Back in to go, back in to go. So the way things get uh, damaged at this point is a little bit of frustration, a little bit of yanking, a little bit of uh, and uh oh, we don't want that to happen. Give myself a chance to calm down a little bit. This big wire here is causing a problem, but it's it's got no play in it whatsoever. It had to have been there when they put the radio in. Well, I'm just going to try again, taking it straight out the back, because that's probably the way it was meant to, to go. Okay, we, we got some of that time. Okay, that's got it. That's got it. It's kind of a jiggle it back and forth thing. Okay, quick look for hidden hidden gold and gold coins and things like that. No. Old stock documents. No. Nothing. Too bad. Maybe a key key to a uh, uh, safety deposit box. No. Once again, I'm gonna have to keep working. Okay. Now, hey, let's look at the back side of this. Um, boy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really mind just taking this right off and getting rid of it. My options are I cut the wire right in the middle. It's probably the best option, in fact. And just join it back together later. Gives me a little bit of wire here for hooking up my own speaker. 
Let's do that. I'm just going to cut this. Just like that. Just going to boldly cut it. What's that? Was that a warning? Which wire do you cut? I mean, all those movies where they have to cut two wires, and they, they always go like this. They go... And the nuclear bomb does not go off. Sorry there. And uh, now I can get rid of the cabinet, which is really advantageous to me. Uh, get damaged here either. Hopefully. Here we go. Back back side. Here we are. Now I feel like I can really work on this thing. So uh, last radio I did had a board with traces on it like this, but the traces had been soldered over everywhere. And uh, it turned out that those soldered over traces were trouble and had to be re-soldered over. This one's not soldered over at all. Doesn't mean anything. Just making an observation here. Here, something a little bit interesting. This, what is that? Right, right below this too. Just a metal plate soldered there. Hmm. Okay, it's a little odd. The long wires just kind of strung along here. And uh, I'm gonna look at the stringing mechanism. I'm gonna get my other camera going. It'll be a little easier. Let's let's do that. Let's do that, but I'm the one who's in control here, so even though I make it sound like you're you're participating, <laughs> it's all me. Oh, look at this. This is some real interesting stuff here. First of all, this is a slug-tuned FM receiver. So I'm going to... There's the slug. And there's the... Uh, look, at, look at the gearing in there. Look at how they've done that on that shaft. Uh, I've never seen anything like that. Cutting in the... Cutting in the uh, So you can see the carbon rod on this one sticking out. So, well, you can see it on this one. It looks like it's oily. Well, okay, whoops. That was a uh, one, one of these clips here. Just blew off. I think we want that happening. Just push it back on. Okay, uh, let's tune the radio and watch the mechanism operate. Slug tuning. So this 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 piece here has to be pretty stiff. I don't want that bending at all. I always think of the uh, radio designers uh, uh, working hard on you know what size capacitor to put in and. And this stuff, I think that's the easy stuff. I think this is the hard stuff coming up with these mechanical designs here. Oh, this looks familiar. The last radio, I had trouble right in an area like this. Look at that little capacitor there. How many of those are in here? That particular type, I think. No, no, that's not a that's a that's a reliable type, I believe. But they used 300 ohm wire just to shoot this one inch from the back of that to the front of this. They thought that was worthwhile doing that. Are those connectors in contact there? Are they supposed to be? Two. 
Well, they're not in contact, but are they ever close? Wouldn't make sense for them to be in contact. They would only use one, one terminal if that was the case. Hear some quiet hissing in the background coming and going. That's my uh, CB radio. The squelch going on and off. Okay. Oh, look, another two. <laughs> I didn't even see this one. That's got to be the ECC 85. And it's pretty dusty. How come some of these tubes are not dusty and others are? Backside. So I'm looking for any evidence of uh, cracking or anything like these. These ones would likely not get disturbed. It's connections that get worked because they're hooked up to something that moves. And there really wouldn't be much of that in here. Uh, volume control. So the volume control is not mounted on the board. The volume control is mounted on the chassis or the front here, so that's not going to cause anything. Yeah, I, I don't think there's too, you know, there's really no reason to be concerned about cold joints until there's a reason to be concerned about them. But it's worth looking at them just to see what, what's in store here. I'm looking for big connections too, like big, uh, are there any here, big, big, big uh, sometimes like the feet of cans and things like that come through and get soldered. And those larger things sometimes don't get soldered quite so well. Yeah, that all looks funny. Look at that interesting symbol down there. What's that say? T, oh, is it the same word again? T O. It's upside down. Teal is something or other, anyway. Hey, look at the string. I'll check the string out here. It's, uh, pretty heavy duty string. What's that? Caught in. It's just some dirt caught in there. That's very weird looking. But, uh, lots of weird looking. String is in great shape. Again, like this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know. Once again, engineers deciding what tube to use. Look what they had to figure out to get the string through here and all the things that it has to do. All kinds of brackets and supports. I and mean, there's a lot to engineering one of these radios. Now, I suppose it's an incremental thing. You know, model number seven is a little bit different than model number six. You don't have to think everything up uh, at once. I can't really get down there. Well, I'm not finding anything here at all that uh, makes me think there's something serious going on. Famous last words. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward thing now to uh, to do the uh, to, to fix up the situation with this capacitor. Let's take a closer look at that. Um, I can actually remove this right out of here. How is the negative done here? Let's go back to that other camera again. Be sure of things. Especially when you're working in this area, the power supply and that. So there's only two terminals sticking out, both painted red. And uh, you can bet the third terminal is simply the shell. It's, it's bolted right down solid here. So uh, so this is an easy guy to work on, I think. Uh, I just need a, a round, round lug somewhere around here. Okay, I'll find one. Capacitors don't, they don't have to sit there. The, the capacitor is where it is. Because look at it, it's a great big thing. Holy smokes. I'm gonna put this on its own mount rather than mount this on the board because it's too heavy for the board. Especially if it were sticking out this way, it'd have the same problem of banging the radio. So, done this way. That's what I think. Now, how do we know for sure this capacitor is shot? Well, so far it's failed the test in the radio itself. 
do I have a replacement for this? You know, I might, I might actually have <laughs> a replacement for that. Um, we just cut the wires off and move on. Cut the terminals off. in the test. Now my experience with testing electrolytic capacitors on here isn't all that great. I'm quite comfortable with the regular capacitors and recognizing what is what is bad. Putting the positive lead on the positive terminal and then see there's no negative terminal here to clip to so you know what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna do that. Okay, so these guys are good for 350 volts, so uh, 50 volts, electrolytic. Charging up, 150. So again, my experience with this isn't all that great, but the eye is not opening all the way. Well, because these always have a leak in them, they're always a little leaky, um, you know, make an adjustment here. That, that adjustment there. Just click, click, click into the setting. The calibration is different here. Oops, 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 don't do that. So what we'll do now, we'll try to measure the capacitance of this. As, as much as I don't think I can, I'm going to try. It's supposed to be a 50, isn't it? 50 and 50. Both of these are supposed to be 50. So we're on the uh, 0.1 to 50. So 50 is right here, and watch for the eye to open. Didn't open at all. Hmm. So when the eye opens right at the end of the run here, we can just ignore it. It doesn't mean anything. So I don't know what this means. This is a very small capacitance now. Oh, 0 0.1 to 50. Yeah, 0 0.1 to 50, 20. There's an overlap here, 20 to 1,000. I never noticed that. Oh, let's see if we can find it on this one. It's not showing up at all. I don't know how to interpret any of this because uh, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, doing electrolytic capacitors. I think the test in the radio is actually valid. The radio is humming. It really, why is it humming? It's got to be humming because of this. So in a sense, what I'm really doing is I'm, I know I have a bad capacitor. And I know whatever readings I see on that instrument are the readings of a bad capacitor. So I can learn. You bad capacitor, you. And the last thing i got to sort out here is uh, I need a, a ground terminal. I need a good... Nothing. Here. What's this? There's nothing in there. I'm going to put a soft tapping screw in here. It's not too good to do a mechanical connection on an electronic part like that, but that's how it was done up here. Or, uh, why this has to be sitting in this area, although it makes sense the wires are there now. 
can always bring a, uh, a negative wire chassis wire out a distance to where again it's just there's nothing to solder to here there's like nothing anywhere this uh, perforated can. What's in there? I'm curious. Let's go look. Don't worry about the capacitor right now. So they put, they put uh, red locking paint on the back of the screw. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's a little nut. That's why they put the locking paint there. I bet you there's an 8 watt resistor in here. It must be a wild guy because they had to put him in a cage. Uh oh, you know what? If I take this screw out, I don't know if I'm going to get it back in. Uh oh, it's inaccessible down there. Uh oh. Just because I just want to see the big resistor. Problematic. So I'm trying to get a grip on the uh, nut, and if I can't, I can't take this out. Let's try peering through the little holes. Just see if we can see stuff in there anyway. I may don't actually have to take it out. I'm looking for a damaged... Well, that's kind of neat. Uh, I need to change my... Uh, what, what is that in there? Huh. Uh, let me change the focus. I'll make the focus tighter yet. Just one sec. <laughs> what is that? An old brick? Oh, I gotta get this can off. There's some kind of diseased monster they put in here. This has got to be that big 5 watt resistor. Do, do I? No, you know what? I don't need to take the can off. I need to measure the resistance of this thing and see if it's still, you know, okay. Oh my gosh, what a ugly looking beast it is, though. A gauged animal. Let's look at the top part again. It looks really rough up here. flakes are. Huh. So the wires, is, is that what this yellow wire is? Yellow wire and that, the yellow and the green wire going into the can. Is that what they're doing? They're going to the resistor. Um, they probably are. Because because you see up here the yellow. You see the yellow and the green wires. The resistor is positioned between the two capacitors, and sure enough, that's where these yellow and green wires are going. So definitely, I just measured between these these two wires. We'll get the uh, we'll get that power supply resistor. It's definitely worth checking before going further. Um, I need a voltmeter though to do it, and. 
Actually, you really need an ohm meter. Where are you? Your ohm meter, here it is. Here it is, not even hiding. being done in circuit, but I'm going to guess it doesn't matter. I'll still get an accurate reading. Hmm, what, what's, what's going on there? It's going negative. Some charge left in the uh, capacitor. It's right, right on the capacitor here. I'm not getting a valid reading. If I want to get a valid reading, the easiest way would be to cut the yellow wire here. Which one? The yellow one? Yeah, the yellow one. Boom! We're <laughs> watching uh, that famous movie, uh, Failsafe. That's why I'm making these jokes here. Okay, what's the resistance of that resistor? 4.2K ohm. And now I'm just going to peek myself upon the, uh, the uh, schematic here, where we see it should be 1, I think it's 1K, just one moment. i got to zoom in on here, so small, the writing. I think it's supposed to be 1K, 1K 8 watt resistor, and I just measured it at, what's it doing? 6K. Somebody's not happy here. Just go open. What happened? Did I, did I just, <laughs> I just break the wire off the end of the resistor here? What happened? Hey, here we go. <laughs> and it's starting. The weirdness. Unexpected, uh, you know, unexpected result. What? It just open. Come on, I just can't go open like that. The can has to come off, that's for sure. I made that a necessary thing now. It appears as if the resistor has gone open. It would be the connection to the resistor. It appears to have gone open. Is that it? Okay, regardless of the troubles to come, so what's happened is the red paint is holding the nut on the screw and the whole thing's turning as a unit and it's not coming loose. Can't get a grip on it that I can see. Can I tip this backwards? What's it gonna be on? It's gonna be on it's gonna be on this. Potentially on this. I think I can tip it backwards here. Let's try it out. Yeah, that's that's fine. So <laughs> that's the screw, and then that is right there. That is right there. That is inaccessible. Huh. That 
to get a hold on the net. To get a hold on the net to take this off to see what's going on with the resistor and the wire net. Oh my gosh. This is not going to be easy here. So way down there. In like a reaching with regular pliers, um, they aren't really shaped right for this. Uh, where'd it go? Yeah, there. So, the problem with these pliers, let, 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 let me show you good ones. So, when I open these, the faces stay parallel. That's unusual. When you open one of these, the faces don't stay parallel at all. And you end up with a so you put that onto a square screw head, and you can never get a good bite. You're just getting little little edge contacts. You can't get a good bite. But this is all I can fit down there. If I can even see down there. This far, I might get a little further here. I can't see if I'm even getting it there. Oh, it's way down there. No, this isn't going to work. By the time I get these in down to where the screw is, I can't. I can't work the, the handles here. It's a stupid situation, isn't it? Um, so it's a good time to stop for a minute and let some thoughts boil up. Let some percolation of ideas occur. So while I'm staring away at the radio, I'm noticing a couple other minor things. So you see these two, these two strings here. There's two of them. You can see them quite, quite clearly up here. They go around the post, come down to this end. They're tied tight. They don't do anything. They don't go anywhere. They don't move anywhere. What are they? They're guide strings. And what are they guiding? The guiding the pointer. But look, the pointer is not in the guide strings. It's come out. So I'm going to There we go. So the pointer now rides in these strings. That's all. <laughs> That's all that was about. Uh, back back to what I'm back to what I'm trying to do here. I have some pliers here with a longer reach. But these are even worse for trying to grab a, a nut like that. You know. But maybe I just have to get enough uh, grip on that nut. Yikes. some cases, in a situation like this where you have a uh, nut that's spinning on the back of the screw, like let's say here where I can show it, um, one, and you can't, you can't get at the nut, just like the situation I'm in now, one of the things you can, you can do is uh, you, you, uh, you know, get, get everything turning and you put, 
tension into the connection. I can maybe stick something under here and, and apply a lot of tension. You can freeze the nut on the back from friction and then you can manage to turn the screw. The problem with this one is the nut is painted. How do I know that's really a problem? How do I know that's really a problem? Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm back pressure on it. I don't I can't imagine this it's gonna work. So there's a small entrance hole here and the nut is right above it. Is there any wild chance I can get a tool in there? I just can't imagine that would work. Yeah, yeah. Can't come down through here. Screw there, but I would start disassembling the whole thing at that point. What if I take that screw out, this piece is no longer screwed here. But no doubt it's all up in behind. Yeah, it's screwed on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't, don't start taking all that apart. And I just found where the rectifier is. There it is. The rectifier is under this plate. And it appears to be in great shape. Looks like a good one. Um, that's, kind of weird, okay? that's, kind of... that's the light. I don't have it like this. Light bulb and a light bulb. some solvent on it. Let me look in there again. Let's just see how, how okay. try and get a really close look at the uh, at the nut. Oh, <laughs> I should turn the camera towards myself if I want to get a good look at the nut. Okay. Yeah, that's the one alright. It's definitely off the surface already. Yet the box doesn't move at all. So I guess maybe I'm just not seeing it for what it is. Now, yeah. how in the heck? So you can stick something in there and wedge it up really hard against the side, the flat side of the nut, and freeze it that way. But you see, that paint is a big problem. Paint. Yeah. Not only did they put it in a tough spot, they painted it. Uh, I'm gonna have to maybe drill it out. Well, that's another option. Just drill it away. It's gone. Drill it or cut it. I don't like drilling stuff on radios because of the metal shrapnel that comes out. Uh, rip the can. Bend the can. Just bend the can up. Just bend it out of the way. Just bend it. <laughs> okay. I just said that nine times. Just bend it out of the way, Jim. Okay, <laughs> and what did we reveal now? Let's put this back up on this. Better way here. Okay. <laughs> and there it is. That's definitely a 5 watt, 8 watt, 8 watt resistor. Designed to get hot, I think. So why, why couldn't I read the resistance on it? Uh, that's a good question. Or my meter. Oh, that's the next question here. Let's just go right on these terminals. That's a pretty heavy-duty thing, you know. To can, big resistor, m metal stands for it, all that stuff. That's a lot. Let's try the yellow wire.
It's really very, very surprising. Am I doing something wrong with this meter? Let's test the meter. Oh, huh? meter's working. So if I can click right on here. Indications are this resistor is is four times the value it's supposed to be. I'm still seeing nothing here. Is that going to have this up to the thing? Now can I get it right in there? I'll put the other lead on. Okay, let's not use these. Let's not use these. Let's go with. I'm just getting some uh, leads here. There we are. Too many, too, too many leads clumped together over there. Okay, you are supposed to be a thousand ohms. Let's put it on uh, twenty thousand. What happened to this guy? He passed on right now, even as we were. Really? That just doesn't seem right. Is that believable? Or is this open and my initial measurements were false? And this guy's actually open. Uh, let's see. Um, so the... I'm not going to get that bracket off. I've got, I've, got to, I've got to unsolder this and take it right out. The radio won't work unless this piece is functional. It won't work at all. Can you, can you, could you hear a hum if this guy's open circuit? I don't know. If it's open circuit, chances are one leg was on the output tube, the output tube was still getting B+. Plus. The other leg is powering up B+, plus for the rest of the radio, not there. But we would never know, because the hum was... Now, is this... Is this wait a minute. we got, we got, we got, we got to look more closely here. Oh, is this soldered in, or is this even more mechanical? Soldered. The solder looks bad. So you wouldn't want to solder. You know what? I, I don't know. Is the resistor soldered there or the resistor terminal goes all the way down to the board? It's terrible looking, isn't it? It'd be uh, uh, the heat, maybe heat affecting the, these connections and ruining them. Oh, the smokes. Okay, well, we'll try desoldering it and we'll see what happens. Whoops, whoops, cameraman. See, it, see if it does desolder. <laughs> I'm usually quite conscious about uh, if something slips, is it going to hit my finger? So I don't think that's going to come off there. So our, our options are cut it away. Yeah, I'm just maybe it's a riveted thing here. Oh, it's really melted. Oh no, it came off. It came off right at the last minute there.
guess it was hanging on there with some little mechanical grip of some sort. Let's not be foolish and pick it up. I'll leave my shop for a little bit. But before I do, quickly, man, get the old meter on that. How can this thing be? Let's look a little closer at it. See if we can spot where it burned up. So, uh, I have not examined too many of these, especially a big guy like this. But uh, what do I see? I see some holes right here. Right here. Little holes. This thing's still warm. <laughs> Don't grab it too tight. Thought I saw something right here. And again, up and up and up, whoop, up here. So this is a wire wound resistor. So you can look at, look at over here. You see something? I mean, I can't work the wire right in here. That doesn't look like a burnout, though. Well, that one does. That one looks a little dark. What kind of a pointer am I using here? <laughs> Look at that. It's a highly crafted tool. And a crack over here, but, uh, you know, I could have done that. Let's look at the actual terminals. Now, it's tricky now. you got to take this wire in here and somehow connect it to these metal t terminals out here. And that's usually done in a crimping, and it's probably inside this pinch point. Maybe not. Maybe they brought it up here. I don't see it. So generally, my understanding of these is that there's a mechanical clamping that goes on to catch the ends of the wire that's in here, and it's mechanical. It's under here. Then you heat the whole thing up and hope it's going to last until the year 2020. Oh, there's nothing inside. That's the problem. Well, open circuit it is. Great. Let's just take a little break here before we put one in. So uh, I don't have a 1,000 ohm 10 watt resistor. So what I do have though is I have some 500 ohms 5 watt resistors here, two of them here, two of them here. These ones, I have some previous project, I guess I soldered them together, so there's a thousand right there. And that would work if I put that in. And the two resistors anticipate heat even better than this one here. Or I can do this. I can put them, put the, these are, did I say 500? These are uh, 2,000 ohm resistors. But you put them in parallel, you end up with a thousand ohms. I think I'm going to go for the parallel. The parallel thing. The problem with this is this is exposed at the top here. If I install that, maybe it's going to touch this can or who knows. So we're going to do these. These will work. Okay, let's see if I can get the lower connection. I got it. Put an extra wire on there. I'll just leave it. Okay, cut 
this one off. A little bit of extra length. bits out of there. Oh, what am I bargain for here? So good. So I'm going to spread these out a little bit. I don't want them up against each other. I'll leave the can down for now in case there's more trouble. In here. That doesn't feel right. So I have to start including the capacitors up here now. I still don't have a ground terminal to hook them up to yet. Just kind of squeeze these on for now. It's not solder. Thought it didn't feel quite right. That's no good.
That's good. Before, when I was wiggling these, and you may not have been able to hear it, I could feel the click. Click, 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 as if something's flipping back and forth. That's what clued me into the fact that they hadn't, uh, they hadn't, uh, the lead hadn't soldered properly. Okay, can down, capacitors in. Now we got to figure out where these two replacement capacitors are going to go, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount them underneath this bracket like this. And we'll look up the red red wires here to the two terminals, and then I'll extend this with a uh, wire uh, down to some appropriate place somewhere. I could come right. To, I could utilize this screw hole here now do something like that. And leave this down or break it right off and get rid of it and just be done with it. Who needs it? What's it really there for anyway? This thing. Some kind of metal shield over the wire wound resistor. Nah, I don't think so. Faraday cage type thing. Okay, so I'm going to mount this stuff in there. And then we're going to test this radio. Hello. Hi, you did, Jim. I'm Jim, yep. How's it going? Not bad. Yeah, uh, sorry, I, uh, you deal with more radios, eh? I do, yep. So, once again, uh, thank you very much for taking the time and talking to me here. No problem. And, uh, have a Merry Christmas. You too, eh? Thank you. We'll see you, bye. Bye. I just recorded that whole call. <laughs> They're not going to go anywhere. What's going on with my soldering iron? Give me the date and time, not, not turning itself on. Now, negative. What should I do with that negative connection? I could swing it over, pile the screw in there, leave this can down. The can's down, I'm not going to get it back into the uh, radio. The can has to be moved up. The can has to be moved up. I could still use the screw though. I like that idea. Uh, so I'm going to work on that. under here I think like that. Better screwdriver. More power. That's not gonna work. Let's try this guy here. There we go. Lots more power. I'm 
that. Okay, that's going to work. So what do we got? We got the two positives hooked up. Everything is stable. Nothing's going anywhere. Ground connection is not the greatest looking thing, but it's fine. Even got the cam back on. New resistors in there. This thing hanging here. I'm going to hang it out the front here. So it doesn't cause a short circuit. Get some of the metal off my bench. Because it's become a bit of a uh, storm of tools on there. <laughs> I don't. I don't like operating things with this much of a mess on my bench. Ready for another try. Dim bulbs on. All is normal. Give it full power. on the capacitors I installed. Oh, that way, look this way. Over 200 volts there. It's a good chance to measure the B plus now, too. 400 there. We heard the hum. Now, like I said, that she's just dead silent here. <sighs> Man alive. Nothing coming out of this out of this radio. Um, that's going to be it for today, though. Uh, yeah, I, I would much rather heard something come out of it, but this is as far as I'm going to get today with it. Tomorrow we'll start, just keep pursuing the the deadness and um, see if we can't get some kind of action out of it. Good. Okay. Not so bad so far. Not so bad. Thanks for watching.